WBNE. Hello, and welcome to episode 54, all about the Tower of Sirith Ungol, chapter one, book six of The Return of the King, being the 54th part of That's What I'm Talking About. My name is Mary Clay. If that's too complicated for you, just call me MC. And today I'm joined by Tyler Collin of Bigger Than Eggs. Bigger Than Eggs. <laughs> oh, my audio spike is. I know disgusting. the spikes are terrible. Oh, this is what podcasters talk about. Oh, did you see the spikes in the audio today? Oh, it's terrible. Uh, oh, so bad. I played a fun game on the talking about Instagram a couple weeks ago where I showed a screenshot of an audio spike and I was like, is this me screaming or laughing or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> this is what, so. what we find joy in. This is those of us who look at waveforms all day. That's what we, there's the fun. Yep. Yep. So Tyler... <laughs> This is, I don't know why this feels weird for me because I talk to you every day, but you're on am the I like, thing ooh, that am I like you a celebrity? Create Tyler. Ooh, I did what help create doing? this. I was doing the wave. <laughs> I'm so excited. It was a it was a tweet like a little over a year ago. I know. And here we are on book six, chapter one. We're almost done with like the first major Tolkien well, the second major Tolkien thing, and then there's the movies and the Hobbit. Wait, the second. The oh, you mean movies. the Hobbit? Right. Yeah, the Hobbit would have been before. You this. know what just blows my mind? I was read. I was as I was reading this at some point recently. I it occurred. To, I was like, it's so weird that Tolkien wrote the Hobbit first and then the Lord of the Rings, because that means that he had like a thousand more pages of a story and characters and history in his head bef- like after he finished the hobbit and like yeah and it was way more in depth too like the hobbit is like a like a kid can read it yeah like you really would have thought that he wrote them in reverse hence why i accidentally covered them in reverse it's fine um well we'll just we'll pause here and we'll start the hobbit okay great perfect i'm sure no one will be mad about that considering we're going to be destroying the ring in two weeks i'm assuming are we really i mean i think so the names of the chapters are so this is oh yeah listeners this is but this is it it's it's the final countdown i'm gonna do that every week yeah this is the tower of sirith ungol and then the next chapter is the land of shadow followed by mount doom so i'm assuming they get to mount doom and the field can i just real quick how how painfully boring of a name is mount doom like we're in the the tower of sirith ungol that's a great fantasy name mount doom that's a bilbo baggins ass name um this is also one of the like one of the nicknames they give aragorn is elf stone because he wears an elf stone so like he's not always super creative not always you know? right on it yeah but He's usually super creative. I mean, the whole thing is pretty super creative. It's I'd so say. fascinating. I was listening to it today. Oh, man, this book is good. Now, which wow. version did you listen to? Dragash. Dragash. Yeah, there you go. Phil Dragash. That dude, does he get to do other things? Or like, did he do know. this? And then the world was like, hey, man, you can't. That's copyrighted work. And then like, he was just canceled from voice acting. How does that work? <sighs> Um, Phil Dragish. Hmm. He seems to be most well known for this project for the Lord of the Rings audiobook because that's like basically the only thing that comes up when you do a search for him. I had to re-download it on another computer today, and you always have to go to the CD underbelly of the internet to find it. I mean, it was the oh, first. Oh, you link. could have texted me. I have it bookmarked. <laughs> I, f- I mean, the first link took me to it, but yeah, it yeah. wasn't like an official website, you know? It was like a it was like a Netscapes website. Anyway, we listened to what is arguably the best chapter in the whole series. Mary Clay, I don't know if you know this or not. I am like a Hobbitpologist. What? I am a, I, I am a big fan of the Hobbit chapters. Okay. 
Oh, oh, you mean you mean the 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 people, not I was I was, I was like, um, you know, that's not this book, right? <laughs> I read chapter one of the, <laughs> of Hobbit, the Hobbit, right? Right, that's what we're doing. <laughs> No, Which I did Tower text of... you last night. I was like, what chapter did I tell you again? Because sometimes I get nervous that I tell guests the wrong chapter, which I have done before. And that my worst fear is that I'm going to get on the Skype call and be like, we're going to start the episode, start the recording. I'll be like, all right. And now we're here to talk about chapter one, book six, The Tower of Seerth Ungol. And then my guest is like, um, I didn't read that chapter. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, <laughs> we are ending this episode uh, this was fun it was nice to meet you <laughs> have a wonderful day yeah yeah um okay so tell me so then backtracking tell me a bit about your like history with lord of the rings uh so my first experience with lord of the rings my dad was reading probably fellowship my dad and my mom would like every night like read books not to each other not to us just like you know how like boomers will just like read before bed yeah i do that sometimes when i'm feeling um anxious about the world when you, when you're tired of tiktok <laughs> i get it right <laughs> um so they were my dad was reading uh fellowship probably i think it was because it was a green book um and then so i asked him i was like oh can i read this and he was like no you definitely wouldn't get it and he was so right he was so so right. i mean i was like 11 right uh, but he was so right. And then uh, I remember telling Alex Barry at the bus stop, he was the kid that lived across the street. I was like, hey, my dad's reading this really cool book. It's called The Tolkien. I think you'd really like it. And so I didn't even know the name of the book. That's why I didn't know if it was Fellowship or not just now. Um, and then my neighbor down the street, John, was like a huge uh, Tolkien film fan, like the Peter Jackson movies, which if we're talking about P.E., Blank, 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 Jackson movies. I think these are the the ones people are talking about. Is wait, is there another P. E. Blank, 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 Jackson director that's not Peter Jackson? No, what do no, you mean? but there are movies with a title character with a P. E. Blank, 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 Jackson name. Okay. His name's Percy Jackson. Oh, All I'm saying is, uh, in the realm uh, of high <laughs> fantasy, I much prefer Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Um, and uh, then, uh, so my buddy John was like super into the movies and we would watch them all the time, but I would always fall asleep because we'd watch like the extended editions and I was like super ADHD and I just wanted to play smash brothers. And then I didn't really think about Lord of the Rings for a long, long time until you brought it up. And then I read, um, fellowship and I read books one, two, and three, um, in like a week and a half. And I was like, these are amazing. And then I set them down. Um, but I recently picked up the movies again, and they are, like, without a doubt, I think, my favorite movies ever. You say that about every movie you watch. Okay, I know that I have this, like, reputation for liking every movie. And I think if I were to make a list, these probably wouldn't be number one. <laughs> but when I, like, the comparison that comes up often is this in Star Wars. And I feel like I just watch Star Wars all the time, so I was like, oh, Star Wars is better, obviously. But then I watched these and I was like, I don't know, man. These are really freaking good. Like really good. And like a lot of the Star Wars movies, like Star Wars fans only like one Star Wars movie. So like this is at least three good films. That is true. I have not like run into a fandom like the Lord of the Rings fandom where they like unapologetically love basically everything about it. And then the things that are annoying, like Tolkien talking ad nauseum about the landscape or horses or history in his books for no apparent reason, everyone is like able to like make fun of it and have fun with it. And it's not like a negative thing about it. And it's not like a right. a, a hating thing. Yeah, that's something I hadn't thought about that like Well they okay, so they do hate the Hobbit movies. Oh, that is yeah, okay, yeah, you're right. But also I, I've <laughs> talked to a lot of people who are like, There what do you mean? There is there are no Hobbit movies. Right. So Right. Like, yeah. Shoot, what was I gonna say? Oh. Listeners, mark on your bingo card. Someone got into Lord of the Rings because their dad was reading it. It's yeah. something that like every time I ask a guest, I'm like, so how do you get into Lord of the Rings? They're always like, well, my dad was reading it and like without well, yeah. fail. So yeah, I mean, that's how Olivia's going to get into it because I know <laughs> Emily's not going to read it. I know that. Whoa. 
that would be an icy day. <laughs> if Emily was like, I'm going to read Fellowship of the Ring. I would be like, do we need to get a divorce? Is something wrong? What's going on? Jeez. Who hurt you? <laughs> Does Emily not read? No, Emily reads like you wouldn't believe. But Emily reads books that like a genre I don't even know exists. Emily will read like, I don't even know how to describe it. Are they beach reads? Is it true crime? It's, I would say... I would say it's beach reads. I would say it's like like books that are not as good as Gone Girl. Okay, I know exactly what you're what kind of book you're talking about. <laughs> right? You buy it, you buy it at an airport. Yes, yes. <laughs> when you forgot the book that you were going to bring and it's on it has like a 15% off sticker on the front cover. Right, it's like it's like stuck there. Yeah. And the and the and the, and the title of it is written in lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> yes okay i know exactly what kind of book you're talking about. emily reads the crap out of these books i literally like i if i pick them up it's like i'm reading a different language i do not understand them in the slightest but then of course if she picks up lord of the rings it is literally a different language so i get it lord of the rings is just it's hard <laughs> it's dense <laughs> to say the least like the amount of times i'll be i'll sit down to read it i'll be like okay no distractions this time. You're going to read three pages nonstop and then a paragraph in. <laughs> I, I'm already like... What, On TikTok. What just happened? <laughs> yeah, that's that's what happens. Even with the Dragash audiobook, I'll be listening to it and I'll be like, okay, we're listening along, we're listening along, and now I am cruising and me. I don't hear yeah. a word he's saying. Yeah. Um, yeah. But like even this chapter, like Tolkien spends like... Six paragraphs <sighs> describing Sam using his shadow puppet to scare off an orc. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. Like, so I guess, yeah, let's just jump into this chapter then. This is the book best six. chapter in the series. Okay, book six, it's... chapter one. Let me tell you why it's the best <laughs> chapter in the series. Okay. One, Samwise Gamgee, the best. He's okay. Two, Frodo, the other best. He's worse. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> No, you're so wrong. Like, Aragorn is like, oh, I'm such a badass. Yeah, no, duh. Everybody knows you're a badass. But Sam is a gardener. And he scares off all these orcs. And he is like, we see his first thrall with the ring, which is so exciting. It's like, oh, man, even this perfect relationship is coming to the power of the Dark Lord Sauron. Oh, it's so good. Oh, oh you can't write this stuff. Well, you can, because that's how we're reading it. Because he did. Because he did. Yeah. 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 So it starts off ex like literally exactly where we left Sam and Frodo at the end of Two Towers. And it starts off with Sam waking up and being confused for a second. And then he like gets sad and depressed when he remembers like what has happened. And that's he loves his best friend. That's me every morning I wake up in the current state of the US. <laughs> right. Where... You wake up and you're like, it's going to be a oh man. <laughs> yeah. You have like <laughs> about... 15 seconds of like oh i wonder what day it is is it sunny out oh right everything is on fire and i hate this country i hate everything anyway yeah, I, time to go make my coffee so right you wake up and you look at your hands and you're like why why are my palms bleeding oh right because i was digging my fingernails into my hand all <laughs> night i remember that now yeah my version of that is I wake up and I'm like, why am I exhausted? Oh, right. That's because I laid awake in bed for two hours without being able to fall asleep at all. And then I had to put on a Welcome to Night Vale episode to help me fall asleep. And then the second it ended, I woke up again. So I did that again four more times. Oh, my gosh. That's so rough. <laughs> um, Side note, in case you were wondering if you can if a, if you can have a anxiety attack in your sleep, you can. Because it happened to me last night and it was terrifying. <laughs> Not oh, terrifying. It. it was like we, it wasn't even, I woke up feeling really weird and disoriented and like nothing I did made my body feel better. And then like 10 minutes later, then the anxiety attack hit. And I was like, what do you have to be anxious over right now? You're just trying to sleep. Oh my gosh. That has been the most frustrating thing about 2020 is, wow, we're we're right here on topic here at, at Lord of the Rings Corner. Uh, welcome welcome to the Prancing Pony. I'm Tyler Carlin. And <laughs> this is Mary Clay Watt. And uh, just grab a drink, grab a flag and a veil, and we're going to chat all about Sam and the boys. Anyway, I have been like, anytime I've ever had mental health issues, they've been like linked to something like like a clear trigger traumatic event that is like sent me down a depressive or even just like a short anxiety attack. 
yesterday for the first time in my life, probably not the first time in my life. This has probably happened a lot of times, but like I was cleaning the dishes and then all of a sudden I was like, oh, well, this is okay. Oh my God. And it was like this huge anxiety attack. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do at all. I hated it. I hated everything about it. Yeah, I just kind of like sat on my floor for a bit and then I turned on the podcast and then I was like, okay, this is better now, I guess. And then it took me another hour to fall asleep. Anyway, okay, Sam and Frodo. Sam and Frodo. Sam, really, this is Sam's, this is Sam's time to shine. This is, this is the chapter when your guests have been like, oh, you'll love Sam. This is the chapter they're talking about. Is it? I don't know. I love Sam. I love Sam from page one. I feel terrible about not liking Sam. TBH. Because it's not even something that like I set out to do. It, it just happened. Because like Tyler, you know you you know me. You know how many trivial dumb things I get really like aggressive opinions about. And Samwise Gamgee is not one of them. Like I easily could have started the book and been like I'm going to hate this character and I'm going to stick to my guns. But I didn't. I just he never everyone was like he'll grow on you and he never did. <laughs> Grow on you when Sam was outside of Frodo's window listening to Gandalf talk about the ring. That's when I was like, "Oh, I love Sam. Sam's great. What a, what a fantastic character." I was about to say something related to houses, Hogwarts houses that we're not going to go into because that's a that's its own like hour and a half long episode for us. It's- oh my gosh! <laughs> so listen, so like hating Sam is being. Like, I'll I'll make the Harry Potter comparison here. Hating Sam is being like. Ron Weasley sucks. I just the sidekick. No, ugh. no. Hermione Granger. Ugh, that's you right now. That is exactly what you are. See, you gotta if you're gonna hate a Potter <laughs> character, you gotta be like Seamus Finnegan is my least favorite character in this series. Which TBH he is. I do not like him. The gag in the movie where he always blows his face up. I hate that. See, I Stop. appreciated it. Because in the very last movie, they brought it back. You actually give us permission to do this. That is correct, Longbottom. To blow it up. Boom. Boom. Wicked. How on earth are we going to do that? Why don't you confer with Mr. Finnegan? As I recall, he has a particular proclivity for pyrotechnics. I can bring it down. I know. That's uh. what I loved about it is it's this random uh. joke that they only did in like the first. I can't even remember if they did it in the second movie too. I know they, they do, did it in he, the first. He drops. Movie. He drops something in the pot, and that time it like poof, in his face. But in oh, the first he does movie, do it in the sixth movie. He, yeah, and in the first movie, he like it's a running Levio joke. Sop. Oh, it's so. St- I hate Seamus Finnegan. I hate Seamus Finnegan. I hate Ernie McMillan. Ugh. Ugh, I can't stand them. Okay. You get to hear my retching noise, dear listener. If you were like, I need a podcast to pull me into Zen so that I don't have to have an anxiety attack. Tyler retching into Harry Potter characters. That's the key. That's This is the sort of binaural relaxation techniques that you need. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Frodo and Sam. <laughs> so Sam's all depressed, obviously, because... He messed up big time and got his got the world's only hope captured by orcs. And he decides he has like it's like interstage left. Emo Sam is here and he starts going down this like not a dark path, but like what they're in Mordor. It's time. And he's it like, is quite literally a dark path. Yeah. He's like, OK, <laughs> well, I guess. I guess I'll have to go find Frodo or die trying. And I will probably die trying, but at least Mm -hmm. that's a lot less effort. Is literally what he says. The perishing is more likely and will be a lot easier anyway. So. Yeah, we got a broken Sam here. That's the mindset of our dear little hero. And Tolkien also helpfully gives us a little a little paragraph about what all of the other thousands of characters are doing at this point in time, which is helpful because I was trying to do the math and be like, I don't know where these the rest of the characters are. But basically, we're back kind of like one or two chapters into the start of Return of the King is roughly the timeline now of where we've gone back. Um Cause at the, I love this line though. Pippin, so like at this time, Pippin watched the madness growing in the eyes of Denethor. So I love that, <laughs> of just like metaphorically, every 
he gives these physical descriptions of like Aragorn was riding down the paths of the dead and this person was doing this. And Pippin was watching the madness in Denethor's eyes grow to the point where he <laughs> set himself on fire. Tolkien is such a good writer. Uh, uh, he's so mad reading this because he's so good. He's okay. Uh. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He's so good. Do you ever feel like he's so good, but at the same time you're like, wait a minute, no, is he that good? Because I'm pretty smart, and this is another language to me. So, oh no, the he ima- can't be that good. The the amount of times where I I constantly go between like, is this actually like smart good writing, or is this just him unnecessarily using old timey complicated words to make it sound confusing and fancy? Right. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Where where it's like. It's like the Sleep With Me podcast, right? Where it's like, we're just going to put a bunch of words together and you'll fall asleep on accident. That's all this is. Yeah. I've never listened to the Sleep With Me podcast. TBH, that sounds terrifying. What? Why? It's so I don't good. know. It's I, I don't like the... I said this. I say this as I've already said in this episode that sometimes I listen to podcasts when I'm trying to fall asleep. But I don't like the idea of someone talking to me for the explicit purpose of trying to help me fall asleep. So that's the great thing about Scoot is that he's not talking to you like, and now relax your toes and your knees. Like that would suck. I would hate that. Ugh. I can retch again. Should I retch? No, no, don't no. do that. You're no. off the podcast. If you do it again, we're ending the episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, that would suck. Instead, he just like, he like narrates stuff uh, totally unrelated. And then he'll go down. The- you got to listen to it. It's, it's fascinating how it knocks you out. Uh, at least it's fascinating. How I it think it would out. just make me anxious because I would be like, okay, this is made for the express purpose of helping me fall asleep. So I guess I have to fall. Like it would be, I feel like it's putting a lot of pressure on There's me. There's a lot of pressure on you to, to pass fall out. Asleep. Yeah. Yeah. And what would end up happening is I don't fall asleep. So, which would then defeat the purpose of po- of the of the podcast. I, th- I feel like there's a really easy way for you to find out whether or not this will work. I'm too scared. Look. And you go to bed anxious every night anyway. So, like, <laughs> what's a little bit more? A little bit more could mean the difference between nothing happened, an uneventful night in my bedroom, and then a paralysis demon showing up at the foot of my bed. I haven't gotten to the sleep paralysis demon phase yet, so I would like to keep it that way. Thank you very much, Lee. We'll see. We'll all see. Okay. So, (laughs) Sam. Samwise Gamgee. This Um, is his whole chapter. I forgot he had the ring on him. So at this point, I was like, ditch Frodo, just go destroy the ring, because that should be the top priority at this point. At but the- only Frodo can destroy the ring. No, not really. It's just a hobbit. No, because Sam puts the ring on and becomes Samwise the Great. It's But like Frodo has already become... I do not believe that it's only Frodo who can destroy the ring. He's the chosen one. I do not believe that it's only Frodo. I think it's I mean, okay, yeah, technically, if, any, if anybody threw it into the fires of Mount Doom, it would be destroyed. It doesn't have to even be a hobbit. It could be anybody but it's got to be frodo because I mean, nobody else has the will to do it i was so like that being and we said learned, this I, chapter is where we learn that right? i don't we learn, think sam could make the journey to mount doom on there which side note they like he like literally enters more or let me i guess let me get to so he S- sam decides he's like okay i'm at the base i'm at one of the like secret entrances to the tower i need to find the front entrance and get Frodo. So he goes back out the tunnels. And at one point he puts on the ring to go invisible and slip by a couple people. And then he like crosses this one area and it says Sam had crossed into Mordor. And I was like, were they not already in Mordor? <laughs> I think this is such a weird. Uh, this is such a. Uh, I know he's not inspired by the wars. But this is such like a borders matter. Yeah. Moment. That like doesn't make any sense to me. Like in my, it's like I'm trying to think of a comparison here without going towards Potter. Do it. I do it all the time. I guess. I guess there is like if you're a wizard, there's like a line you step past, or all of a sudden you can see Hogwarts. That's probably how the concealment charm works. But I, I guess in my mind, it's just like if you're in the general vicinity, there's not like a border you could cross. You're just either at Hogwarts, Hor- Hogwarts. 
Are you her work? Are you ready for this? Or not? So I was looking. What? I just flipped to the map. Yeah. Uh, I was to. I was right now years old when I learned that Minas Morgul and Seerith Ungol are two different towers. Come on, we gotta. <laughs> we gotta learn your your token. This is unfair. He gives everything 20 names. How am I supposed to know the difference between the one time the, the he na- the one time he references two different things that it's actually two different things? So, I don't know. Do you want to know a story about Strider? Sure. So when I was in elementary school, <laughs> we were charged with writing like a fiction story. Oh jeez. Like an actual like multiple chapters like i mean i probably wrote five pages okay <laughs> solid effort <laughs> well i guess this was good how old were For you a third what, grade or fourth grader yeah this is uh it still exists somewhere in my parents house we had to like bind them and everything it was it was a cool project except miss powell was the worst uh i think about this project anytime i think about strider because in this book i didn't mean to do this okay did but you I copy Lord about, of the Rings? No. I co- no, so I didn't copy Lord of the Rings at all. Um, I wrote a story about two, tri- two time travelers named Bill and Ted who use a phone booth. And I straight up did, like, this is a true story. I did not see Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure until, like, after this project. This is a, wholly a coincidence. Mm-hmm. Anyway, they were accompanied by uh, a third character, a bonus character uh i want to say i I flipped between two names and this is why i always think of strider is that like originally i called him leon (laughs) and like midway through writing it i was like i don't like that name so like in the story i was like that's just what my dad calls me my real name is i want to say i switched it to lance which is not any better but like (laughs) that when i read this story and strider goes from strider to aragorn i always imagine Tolkien sitting there and being like, yeah, Strider was a stupid name. I, I don't like that anymore. And then naming him Aragorn. Yes, uh, Tyler, one of um, one of the greatest authors on earth. <laughs> it was exactly like 10-year-old Tyler. 10-year-old Tyler's time travel story. S- switching the names Leon to Lance. God, those are both like terrible names. Terrible too. names. <laughs> like so, neither Leon- of them are cool. So I think this is actually if I if I dig this rabbit hole deeper, uh, the reason I chose. Oh no! Does Leon one of them mean because, something? So Leon was the uh, nickname. So this it's the same sort of situation. Nickname of Squall Leonhart, uh, who is like the main character of Final Fantasy VIII. I haven't seen that. Means something to me. So Squall, which is a worse name than Leon, carried a gun blade. Mm-hmm. It's a very cool weapon. IDK, I think Squall would have been a better name than Leon. Than Leon? For your little Bill and Ted's knockoff adventure. <laughs> I thought you were, because I could see you type, and I thought you were looking up what the, like, what the or- name origin of Leon is. And I thought you were going to tell me it means, like, Aragon. Lance. <laughs> oh, wait, no. Uh, no Aragorn. So. Leon, God, I did Leon. it! Leon would be a lion. That would be what it means. Anyway, Leon is a cool freaking character. I'm going to have to send you a photo of this dude. Okay. Because imagine like 10-year-old Tyler being like, this is the pinnacle of cool. (laughs) This is... I can imagine 10-year-old Tyler thinking a lot of things are the pinnacle of cool. Really, anything my brothers were interested in was the pinnacle of cool. That's, That's what like defined cool was... Your brothers are into this and you're not old enough to be into this yet. That just doesn't look like you could use it at all. How do you... There's no way you could use that weapon as a gun. I believe the barrel is the There's opposite n- of the blade. So, like, the blade is on one side and then the barrel, if you see it comes down, I think that's it on the back side of the blade. But, like, there, there's... You, the The recoil you would have a sword smack you in the face well not if you're this freaking strong he's the heart of a lion he's not even the only character who's had one of these type weapons wait what is this from again final that's from final fantasy 8 final fantasy 8 
Yeah, and then they brought back the gun blade in Final Fantasy 13. You're learning all sorts of stuff today with Lightning, who is just an excellent protagonist, and I'll send you a picture of what she looks like. We're learning oh, all geez. about Final Fantasy today. You gotta understand, if you're gonna get into the high fantasy world of Lord of the Rings, you're gonna have to get into the high First fantasy world of Final, Final Fantasy. First, you gotta do Final Fantasy. Yeah. So, yeah. is this is this a video game, a movie? Yeah, they're they're video games. Okay. Uh, there have been films, but not of of either of these characters. There have been films of the characters from Final Fantasy VII. Her. So her, hers like folds up. Her. So that makes it a little bit more. Sense. Her skirt is is. Not the, combat ready. The belt no. is wider than the skirt, almost. No, it's not. It's maybe, like, there is no way she could fight in the, I'm just stunned. What are you talking about? You can't wear a long skirt to battle in. I mean, you could wear this if you don't care about showing the world your bits. magical defenses. <laughs> She's wearing lollies. That's what they're called, right? That's what cheerleaders wear? Yeah, um, because I was a cheerleader. Definitely. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't either. Yes, they're called dollies. I do know that, though. Nailed it. She got her Sophie's on. Sophie's. I still have a bunch of Sophie's. Those are great. Okay. They're like $2. If I could buy shorts for $2. Which is so funny, because back in the day, it was like the height of, of like, this is a status symbol. I mean, you gotta wonder, though. Was it? No, it was. It was. As a girl who was... A girl in the 2000s. As a girl who was a girl, yeah, who grew up. <laughs> As someone who was a girl in the 2000s, it was like, Sophie's were cool, and you had to roll them down twice. Yeah, yeah, I remember It this. had to be twice. If you didn't roll them down at all, nerd. If you rolled them down once, the little white part of the elastic band would show. I thought that was the part you were su- that was like supposed to be visible. No. Then you roll it again. So that at least this is what this is how you were cool. At and now you were you were popular, correct? Yes, very. <laughs> and I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh at that. You're right. You were super popular. Yeah. Uh huh. Don't you question it for a minute? <laughs> do you think I was popular? Seriously, do you think I was popular in high school? Yes. No. <laughs> no. People knew no. about the Squall Leon thing. <laughs> Did that follow you to high school or was this no, like it a, didn't. Oh, okay. I was uh, the only thing about that project that like I distinctly remember was we had to like when I say we had to bind our own book, basically we had to cut fabric to super glue to uh like a manila folder and it made this like kind of cool book binding thing. It was like it was like it was a really cool arts and crafts project. I genuinely liked it. Um, but mine, like you had to use a pattern because if you use a solid color, you could just see like little polka dots of the glue and mine was a solid color. Oh. And mine was the only solid colored one. Like everybody Noob. else got the memo. Oh, you nerd. Yeah. I mean, it was awful. So now I had this great epic fantasy adventure. And and instead of some cool fantasy cover art, I had polka dots. Mm, man, rookie mistake. I know. Embarrassment Gosh. to society. In that same class, I had to write a persuasive paper to my mom. And I asked her for a Nintendo GameCube. Did you get it? Uh, I don't think from that paper, but I did get it for my birthday. So that's during the school year. So maybe, I don't know. I know that I was like, I want a GameCube and all the other kids in class wanted like way more reasonable items as though a GameCube, like Nintendo's always had inexpensive consoles. It was like 200 bucks, which I like, okay, $200 is not nothing to a 10 year old. Uh, But everybody else was like, I want Sophie's for like $5. (laughs) My GameCube, man. And I got it. Played Double Dash. Got the golden cart. Loved it. Uh, I never got a GameCube because... Um, you didn't want to play Wind Waker? I don't know. I wasn't allowed to have a GameCube for whatever reason. It made me upset. How much are Sophie's? Sophie Authentic Shorts. They're $8. I can't believe that. Gosh. I was always under the impression that they were like $50. No, for these little cotton shorts? I thought they were... The way that... The way that like my sister schooled me and how to wear these, <laughs> I thought they were like the equivalent of Levi jeans. Are Levi jeans expensive? Yes, especially like in the. That was another cool thing. Okay, you know what's like... another cool thing is talking about Lord of the Rings when we are forty-two minutes into an episode about Lord of the Rings. I've talked about, I gave my piece. This is Sam's episode and I won't let you take it away from me. <laughs> okay, so 
Sam has crossed into Mordor, and it's a moment of the Paul Rudd. Who would have thought? Not me. Kind of a thing. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Just always, always with the hobbits. And off in the distance, he sees Mount Doom glowing ominously, I guess. And I like this. There's this line about how the the way that like the glow looked on like through the fog and smoke and everything on one of the mountains now glared against the stark rock faces so that they seemed to be drenched with blood. Oh, yeah. What imagery. That's cool and nice for like setting the mood a little ambiance yeah oh yeah he's getting he's into lighting Mordor. candles right there is this when he sees the watchers let me tell you he's lighting candles and they're flesh scented they're Ew. not they're not lavender they're not pumpkin spice they're flesh scented this is my candle this is <laughs> this is my candle singed hair <laughs> you know you can't retch on the podcast there's no retching on the podcast i can't remember someone said it one of the discussion questions a couple weeks ago was what smell would awaken you from death and someone said say i think it was actually ryan on twitter he replied right like 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 sort of star wars yeah sort of star wars ryan and which side note i listened to the dad the like try dad force episode i want the three of you to just have a dad cast can i tell you straight up when we were done i was like we have to do that again like we we are required to sit down (laughs) and have this conversation another time i think i don't think ryan knew the energy he was getting when he was like tyler will you do a podcast with me because i was like jacked up about excited being a to do dad this, about being and, a dad and podcasting and podcasting while being a dad oh man everything was just there uh, listeners for feel- those of you that don't know um tyler and casey were on an episode of the sort of star wars podcast with ryan and they literally just talked about being a dad and podcasting and it was like the most wholesome podcast i've listened to in a while so you should go listen to it yeah if you need or if you really want like behind the scenes stuff we talk a lot about what goes on behind the microphone i guess this is what goes on behind the microphone we talk about what goes on in front of the. i don't know the other thing that's not talking to the microphone the the rest of the podcast yeah the rest of it off air that part there's a lot of that thing most people would refer to as life yeah well i don't have that I have, well, you know, I have Final Fantasy X. There's 10 of them. Well, so, okay, so Lightning was from 13, <laughs> uh, but I think they're on 15 right now. These, okay. So, okay, they're, l- let me let me just. No, 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 we are not going down this rabbit hole. <laughs> I need to talk about Lord of the Rings for okay, okay, some okay. portion have of you this listened, podcast. Have you ever listened to Bacon and Eggs and been like. No, this can't is, say this I have. Is, this is not about Captain Marvel at all. This is, this is about. <laughs> All sorts of other stuff. That one probably was about Captain Marvel. I feel like we did that one justice. No idea, though. Even even before even before we were friends, you knew that if you didn't talk about Captain Marvel in your Captain Marvel episode, that you would read. I'll get a yeah. I'll get a <laughs> a, a, a little oh the the thing the the, <laughs> the, the, the gif I use all the time that I actually haven't used in a while. I'll have to go tweet it. You know that I would have like yelled at y'all over Twitter, and I don't, I didn't even know y'all at that point. Did you listen before you knew us? Yes. P- no. <laughs> I never subscribed, but every now and then I'd be like, "Oh, these guys from CNU had that podcast." I keep forgetting. Let me like see what episodes they've done, and I'd be like, "Oh, this one. This episode's about uh oh, I know this movie." I know this one. Yeah. And then I'd and then listen it would... to it, and I'd be like, "This isn't about the movie at all." <laughs> You know what's so frustrating about being those guys from CNU who have a podcast is that we, I mean, this is excellent. I'm super happy for them. But like, we have a pretty big podcast, but we are nowhere near the largest podcast to come out of CNU. CNU, yeah. That would be, and that's why we drink. Yes. For those of you listeners, <laughs> M. Schultz on, and that's why we drink, is a CNU is a captain alum, for life. Oh, alum, alumniati. Alum- <laughs> alum- Illuminati. <laughs> I always get confused with what you're supposed to use when you're talking about a single person. So. I don't think she's single. Are they? They, they yeah. Be. Oh, you mean? I get it because <laughs> they're in a relationship. You're bad. Yeah. It's almost like you're a dad. Okay. Anyway, yeah. So how we got on that tangent is yeah. Ryan 
replied and was like, oh, the, the smell of burnt hair would wake me up. I was like, what? Because at that point, I had just been getting pleasant answers like pizza, cookies, uh, pizza. pumpkin pie on Thanksgiving morning. And then it was like singed hair. And I was like, that's disgusting. As disgusting as a flesh candle. A <laughs> flesh candle. I also hate the word flesh. I don't know if I've talked about this before. I hate the word flesh. It's gross. So, uh... Flesh. We're gonna go back into the realm of video games for a moment because that's where high fantasy exists for Tyler. In the video game series Borderlands, if you have a weapon that does fire damage, it's specifically described in its like item description as highly effective versus flesh. Oh, I, I just realized that I'm on a podcast and listeners can't see the <laughs> reaction I just gave, <laughs> which was disgust. Flesh. Yeah. It's good times. Okay. Sam crosses into Mordor and says, you know, when you texted me and you're like, how long will we be recording? I said an hour, hour and a half. And I almost said it could be a lot longer because it's us. And right. I didn't because I was like, no, I'm going to keep us on track because he already takes an evening out of his week to record and I don't want to take a I don't want to take up too much more of his time away from his wife and his child but here we are 50 minutes in <laughs> and two pages into the chapter <laughs> is it is it's you, not this my real fault. so what? I have, fun fact listener if you love my voice which I'm so so sorry uh but I'll be on three four podcasts this week what? four podcasts well I'll be on my two right right yeah Bagels and bacon and eggs. And then I'll be on this one. And then I will be on Sincerely Us to talk about Hamilton. Is that? Oh, okay, cool. I didn't even plan it that way, but so I'm really, glad it aligned. I'm not on Late to the Party and I'm not on Hello from Elsewhere. But if you want to listen to me and Casey ch- talk to each other, that's also available. So, and if you want to listen to D&D, you can go you know I have, on Patreon. You know I have like an entire section where I do credits and I plug WB and E and I yeah. plug a show on the network. Like yeah. I do all that you and I and I give <laughs> you an opportunity to talk about the things that you do. Now you don't have to do that because I've already done it. It's called mid roll. We're advanced podcasting technique. Organic baked in. You couldn't pull this out in six months if you got an ad spot for it if you wanted to. So boom. Uh what are we talking about? Lord of the Rings. We're talking about... Talking about Lord of the Rings. See what I did Tell there. me more. Guide, railroad me a little bit. Get me on track. I haven't smiled this much in weeks. Honestly, I... <laughs> where are they? I don't know. Oh, okay, right. So, Sam crosses the into Mordor. The name of where they are is in the chapter. <laughs> he crosses into Mordor, and he, as he makes this, like, step, he feels the weight of the ring, like, pulling down on him, and... He has this, is this where he has the moment? Yeah. So he has this moment of like, I could put on the ring and I could be, it's so cute. Samwise the strong hero the strong of the age. Yeah. And he's like, I would go and defeat everything and I would turn all these terrible lands into gardens and there would be uh uh fruit and trees and flowers everywhere uh, <laughs> and sam a man <laughs> after my own heart it just made me laugh a lot that like sam under the influence of the ring is like i'm a plant a bunch of trees and we're gonna have beautiful gardens and there's actually a line in a very potter musical in the song with quirrell and Voldemort. And Quirrell goes, When I rule the world, I'll plant flowers. And that's literally Sam. Yeah. When I rule the world, I'll I'm plant flowers. That's being prof- Professor Quirrell. But he stops himself from becoming Samwise the Strong and using the ring. And like, even I, f- I forget all the time. I'll be like, Wait, yeah, Sam, why don't you just put on the ring and use that to, like, go find Frodo and defeat everything? And then you guys can, like, just... Because in my mind, the ring is also... It's like the the star um, thing in Mario Kart where you're just, like, invincible. And it's like... instead of invincible, the eye of death will feast its eyes upon you. And I'm always like, just use the ring and then our problems will go away. And then I remember that like, that's literally the point is that we can't. 
and it has to right. be destroyed. And literally someone died over this. And I mean, did we lose anybody worthwhile, though? No one important. Certainly important. not any, certainly not Boromir or any, anyone important like that who died making that same mistake barely makes it into the second you know maybe (laughs) i'm gonna i'm gonna cut deep for a second deep and dark also maybe the reason i hate boromir is because i'm very similar to boromir (laughs) because i also am like why don't we just use the ring oh gosh (laughs) you can't resist the thrall that's um but yeah sam is like no i'm not gonna use the ring I have to find Frodo and we have to find our way out of here. And he comes across the two watchers and the T and the W are capitalized. And I thought these were going to be like the in Fellowship outside of Moria. There's a like tentacle monster in a lake that I think is also called the Watcher. So I thought these were like two squids tentacle monsters it has a bunch of tentacles we went a whole new direction with lord of the rings it has a bunch of <laughs> what you want I know. me to pull out fellowship and read you where it says no that, no like, no 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 i believe you yeah i trust you the tentacles like reach out of the lake and grab i forget who probably boromir i don't remember pippin pippin <laughs> no i think it was maybe frodo um because it's always frodo Poor Frodo. But I think these are two, like, statues? Because it... I can never tell. This is the other thing about Tolkien, is that he makes me a completely literate adult, like, question my own literacy, and... It's like, like, it's like that TikTok that's like, I don't know if I know how to read or if I just memorized a lot of words. That's not a TikTok, Tyler. It's from New Girl, and Nick Miller says it. I'm not convinced I know how to read. I've just memorized a lot of words. Oh, yes, you're right. I've, you know, I've seen every episode of New Girl. And, AKA uh, my favorite show. Actually, I don't know if it's my favorite show. It's definitely one of my favorite shows that I'm probably going to, as soon as we hang up, I'm going to start my 50th rewatch of it. And no way. 50th? Nick Miller is me <laughs> in so many ways. Just the part. Yeah. If you love New Girl so much, I'm going to need bangs funnily enough i was talking i was talking to it's quarantine i was talking to my co-hosts on the restricted section and one of them wow just plugging right in the middle of the show you know there's a there's a credits for that (laughs) so i was talking to we were having like a zoom i don't know party or whatever as much of a party as it can be when you're drinking alone in your apartment and then you end the zoom call and suddenly you're just drunk and alone in your apartment right anyway and i was talking about like oh yeah i cut my fringe lol isn't it terrible and someone was like i mean you could go for full bang but like just know you would probably look a lot like a knockoff zoe de chanel and i was like who doesn't want that i mean i could look like a knockoff zoe de chanel i would except for her eyes her eyes are scary i disagree actually have you seen pictures of her without without her bang it's wild. It's a different human it's being. Terrifying. Um okay, you know what else is terrifying? These watchers. They're these statues that are carved out. Oh, yeah. So I was saying is Tolkien writes in such a way that he makes me a completely literate, smart adult question my own reading comprehension. Where he'll say things like, they seemed to be carved out of huge blocks of stone, immovable, and yet they were aware. And it's the fact that he puts in, they seemed to be carved out. And I was like, so are they or are they not carved out of stone? Right. Are they sentient creatures? Are they alive? Are they going to like stand up and walk around and go after Sam? Or are they literally just carved out of stone? My interpretation here is probably incorrect but is that like they are genuinely stone like statues but they're not non-aware like there's a certain degree of sentience where like if they see you like they're almost like cameras right if they see you somebody will know it will it will alert the rest of the crowd but not like not in the way that like a camera would but like functionally serves the same purpose yeah and that's what you know 
every now and then I'll I'll be like, wait a minute, how could Sam possibly know this? Because it says that they uh, some dreadful spirit of evil vigilance abode in them. They knew an enemy, visible or invisible, none could pass unheeded. They would forbid his entry or his escape. And sometimes I'm like, how did Sam? How would Sam have known this? And technically, Bilbo is the one writing this. How would Bilbo have known that? You know. And like Spilbo I know knows that all. I know that it wasn't Bilbo that actually wrote. I know it was Tolkien. I know he wrote right. this, and and he has he had a wall of. You red. can't have it both ways, okay? You can't read Potter and be like, "Harry's such an unreliable narrator," and then read this and be like, "How on earth would he know all this?" You got to pick one, man. You got to You can't. Complain I've never about both. said Harry's an unreliable narrator. I've said Harry is as observant a narrator as a brick wall. I disagree. And I think that's it's, done uh, I think that's done intentionally. Well, yeah, I mean she certainly hides things on purpose, but uh Harry's not an unreliable narrator. We got the story. <laughs> it makes sense. It is better told than any other young adult fiction out there. I guess, yeah. Yeah. I, I he's very unreliable given the fact that ninety percent of the time he thinks it's Snape and only ten percent of the time it actually is Snape. Except it's always Snape. It's not. Oh, it's, it's sure. literally so not. I mean, is okay, he a horrible no, it all person? Comes, yeah. It but... all comes down to if Snape didn't bully Petunia, <laughs> Harry's life wouldn't suck. Yeah. But Harry doesn't know that until he's 17 years old. <laughs> but like, yeah, that's what, it, but either way, it would have all been fine if Snape didn't bully Petunia. It would have all been fine if Snape didn't bully 11 year old children. <laughs> right. If Snape didn't <laughs> knock off Fred's ear. Would have all been fine. Actually, no, it was George. It was... George lost his George's ear. Is he the holy Fred's one? Because Fred's the one that died. And yeah, then people like know. to people like to make really fun statements, like when George looks in the mirror of Erised, at first he thinks it's a normal mirror, and then he realizes that his reflection has two ears, and that's how he's like, "Oh, it's it's Fred." That sucks. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so. <laughs> I hate that. I hate that you gave me that thought. I hate that. Hate everything about this moment we're in right now. Great, much like how I feel every waking moment of my life. Um, so (laughs) tingly, uncomfortable, (laughs) and that's where we are going to leave this week's episode. As I kind of suspected, Tyler and I talked for a long time. A lot of that time was not about Lord of the Rings, but it was still a good time. So it's going to be a two-parter. So come back next week to hear more about, I would say hear more about the chapter, but I honestly don't remember how much we talk about the chapter. You can guarantee that we do talk more about, you guessed it, Final Fantasy. So come back next week for more fun times with Tyler and I. Me, Tyler and me, Tyler and me. That's the grammatically correct version. That's what I'm talking about as a proud member of WBE. You can learn more about that by going to WBE.org, where you can also find other shows on the network like Late to the Party. In a world not unlike our own. It is a balmy 80 degrees in Miami, Florida. I am chaotic neutral tiefling monk. I don't recall there being tieflings in Miami. Now you know the hammer toss isn't an actual hammer, right? It is in this universe. Okay. No, it's a, it's a big old it's a big old hammer. It's a big old sledgehammer. <laughs> Where magic and monsters run rampant. Kind of looks like a bug monster. Oh, Jordan has showed us a diagram of, uh, I think, Red Eyes Black Dragon from yeah. the Yu Gi Oh! Oh my god. god. Uh, well, I speak infernal, so I'm going to ask it what the heck it is. A real estate agent. Lily Davis, who sells real estate by day. A football coach. I love you. Don't touch my flowers. A failed actor. I am a former Broadway star. And a teenager. Sunny days, a student in college, crazy, right? Must save the world. And you're waving your clipboard back and forth and... Do I feel my clipboard connect with something? Coming March 23rd to WBNE. Late to the party. The cover art is by Graphite, a.k.a. Vaishan Brandon. You can support him on Instagram at graphite.vmb. You can find the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at TolkienAboutPod, as well as join the Facebook group. You can find me on Twitter at MCWhatsApp and Instagram at MCTurnDownForWhat. You can support the podcast on Patreon at patreon.com slash TolkienAboutPod. And this week's sponsor is Clark. Clark, thank you so much for being a sponsor of That's What I'm Talking About. I really appreciate your support. 
Um, I don't want to just like end the episode with credits. So let's do, I'm going to end it with a joke. Why did the best man go to Mount Doom? Because he was the ring bearer. You're right. I hate myself too. Okay. And that's what I'm talking about. Uh, okay, this one's bad. Okay, ready? What do you call a kid who can't find his toy? Lego loss. <laughs> what do you need to play the new Lord of the Rings pinball games? Tolkien's. <laughs> Get it? Like, to- like tokens?